So the actual composition of the panel is very critical for the trustworthiness of the guideline in the end. We did have some early development groups where we didn't have consumers, and I, I did that with other organizations as well as ours. And quite frankly, the discussions get kind of boring. It's always best to have consumer representatives on the panels. They bring a unique perspective. Once you add the consumers in the room, you have a new obligation. You have an obligation to speak about things in ways everybody can understand. When one of the consumer representatives on the lung cancer screening guidelines pointed out the way consumers would have interpreted a draft recommendation and immediately it was rewritten <laughs> because it wasn't the right meaning that was meant to be conveyed. They valued hearing that black women were not well represented in their clinical trials. They valued hearing how young women were dying and what their lives were like and that they felt a sense of urgency. My position was let's look at the whole continuum of medications that affect childbearing women and keep on the table as well all of the high rates of medication exposure during the time of birth and it was taken up so I think that's exciting to know that we can sit at the table and broaden the discourse and make a difference. I got them to express the benefit, the effectiveness of it, in a way that I thought was understandable to the public, and, and that felt good. You know that someone is looking over your shoulder and thinking about adverse events and side effects and cost and access to care, things that you might not view as important. So I think it does change the dynamics a lot, and it makes it a much more robust guideline. So I would say don't be intimidated by patients. Um, work with us and I would say that you know patients are one of the greatest untapped resources our stories our wisdom um, use that as a, as a valuable resource